This is a good problem to help us understand um, the relationship between the graph of a function and the graph of a derivative. And, and also a good a little uh, uh, help on deepening our grasp of piecewise functions. So what I'm supposed to do with this problem is I'm supposed to graph a continuous function, f, that meets these conditions. One, that f of 0 is equal to negative 1, and that the derivative of the function satisfies these conditions. So we can start in the easy place. And if I know that f of 0 equals negative 1, that means I'm going to have this point right there, 0, negative 1. Now, in order to graph this graph properly, I can see that I'm going to have one piece that is to the left of negative 1, and I'm going to have another, another piece that's to the right of negative 1. So just to make my life a little bit easier, um, I think I'm going to draw a line right here at x equals negative 1. And, and I'm doing that because I know that this side of the graph is going to look one way, and this side of the graph is going to look another way, because the slope of the tangent of that graph, my derivative, is going to be different on either side of x equals negative 1. Well, because I was given a point that is on the right side of that dividing line, this point right here, my point 0, negative 1, I am going to start with this piece of the piecewise function. Normally, I like to go left to right. But this piece of the piecewise function is going to have my point 0, negative 1 in it. You might want to pause the video and think about that for just a minute. But it's, it's clearly saying that my slope of the tangent line of my function f is going to be negative 2, where x is greater than negative 1. And it has to include this point, because that point I've been given right there. So I'm going to have a line with a slope of negative 2 that is going to pass through the point 0, negative 1. I know it's going to be a line because I'm given the slope of the tangent is negative 2, and negative 2 has no x variables in there. It just has to be a line with a slope of negative 2. So if it's going to pass through this point right here, I can go 1 over 2 down, 1 over 2 down, and I can see that I'm going to get a line that's going to go like that, and then it's going to stop right there at x equals negative 1, because that is the definition here that we're given of the derivative. So it is a line going that way. Now I've been told that I need to make sure that this function is continuous. So I know that to the left <coughs> of x equals negative 1, I'm going to have to include this point right there. The slope of that part of the function is going to be 1. So it can only be a line because a line has a slope of, of, a, of, an, of an integer so or of a number without a variable. So it's going to be like that. And that's what my function is going to look like. Now, what about this point right here? Does that point right here belong to this part of the function? or that part of the function. It doesn't really matter, because this point right here satisfies the conditions of either of these. But it has to be a point. It can't be an open circle, because I've been told that the graph has to be continuous. So a couple things to note about this problem or this type of a problem. One is to first, if you're given the derivative and a piecewise function, look and see where the two pieces um, are different. And, and make yourself a little dotted line. In fact, I should probably delete that dotted line. Because it's not, it's not really part of the function. But make yourself a little dotted line so that you know which half to work on. Because if you're given a point, it's only going to be on one half of that of that dividing line there, and, and you need to make sure that your first piece goes through that point. 
really putting my dotted line back here for a second, if I didn't um, draw my right hand part of this first, I really wouldn't know where the left hand part would start. So if I had this piece of the function and all I was trying to satisfy was this part of the derivative, since I don't have a point on the left hand side of that dividing line, I mean really this line here, this any of these lines right here satisfy the top condition. It's that it's a derivative of 1, the slope of the line is 1, and it's where x equals negative, where x is less than negative 1. So anywhere along here is satisfactory, but I wouldn't know that it has to start right at that point had I not drawn my first, my, my right side first. If I hadn't drawn my right side first, the right side has to go through that point. So I knew exactly where it would end at the value x equals negative 1. So I really have to start this um, graph by having a point and working on the side of the piecewise function of the derivative that gives me that point. The second thing that I want to point out here is that when your derivative is just a number without a variable, it's telling you, remember, the derivative is the slope of the tangent line of the original function. And if it's a slope of 1 or 2 or negative 1 half, any number without a variable, then it's telling you that the, that, that the function itself has to be a straight line. Because only a straight line is going to have a continuous slope. Anything that has any kind of a curve in it, as you can see, the slope of the tangent line is going to change along the curve. 